Hello everybody, my name is Halo and in this video we are going to be looking at a classic synchronization problem in computer science. We are going through operating systems in this course and in this video we are going to be looking at the producer consumer problem. Okay, We are going to be writing a Python script for that and this is going to be kind of a code walkthrough not the concept explanation. If you guys want to know that, I suggest you to see some other video and come back here for the code walk okay so first let's talk about the producer consumer problem basically let's formally define it there is a shared buffer okay which is like queue where producers generate items place them into the buffer while consumers remove items from the buffer how this looks like as an example is let's say you are near school canteen okay there there is a rack full of buns you want to go ahead and eat that bun but the there's all the buns are not there at the same time the chef is cooking one one bun and keeping it to the queue and you are taking it from the queue. Queue is the tray here. Okay. So for every bun that the chef who is the producer pro, producer is, there is a consumer who is a student that will take from that bun and keep it to himself. Okay. So the idea is two things. Number one, the producer, one, if the tray of buns, say there is like 50 buns there, if those all those 50 buns are full, he should not cook any more buns because nobody is buying. There is no point right the tray will overflow at the same time the tray should not be empty when the students are coming to eat that bun correct so two things to keep in mind is you need to make sure that something is always there for the producer to be consumed and the producer does not overfill the queue and the consumer does not consume it when the queue is empty that's it so how this looks like in code we're going to be dealing with three things time already we discussed in the previous uh, episodes why we are using time just to show that we are doing some process then we are going to be using semaphores i hope you are able to understand what semaphores are we are not going to discuss that here if you want to watch some other videos and come semaphores are integers only basically and finally we need threads okay so this is what those imports will look like then what do we need we need to define some stuff what is max c here? max c is nothing but the size of the buffer or the size of the queue then we need three semaphores here First semaphore is called full and full indicates the amount of uh, items on the queue. Initially, there is nothing there. So, the full is 0. At the same time, initially everything is empty. So, we set empty to be max C. Initialize that semaphore value to be the maximum uh, you know, stuff in the particular queue. Then mutex is obviously mutual exclusion. I think you guys know what that is. That is there to make sure that two particular threads don't do the operation at the same time. That's it. Finally, we have the queue itself. Then we need to define two functions. One is for the producer and one is for the consumer. The producer's job is to increase this particular full, right? Consumer's job is to decrease this full and increase this empty. Producer's job will be to what? It will be nothing but to increase this full and decrease this empty. Okay. That's how empty and full works hand in hand because if there's one being full, there is one less being empty. Okay. So if you're defining that, for producer this is what that will look like nothing but in empty dot acquire means nothing but reduce the value of empty mutex dot acquire mutex dot release is nothing but just mutual exclusion i think that you guys know appending this for some random integer i to the queue to say that something is there in the queue and we are releasing full release means increase the value of the semaphore so we're increasing the count of the full. this is what producer looks like at the same time let's go ahead and define a consumer as well all of this will remain the same. Instead of empty dot acquire, you'll do full dot acquire. You'll reduce the full because you are consuming something. You'll increase the empty. At the same time, mutex dot acquire, mutex dot release, consumer has consumed. Then we do q dot pop of zero. See, this algorithm works in a way that whatever is there in the queue, that is the first thing that will be consumed by any consumer. If you go back to the canteen example, if there's a bun, no matter which student comes, they'll take the first bun, right? That's what this does. So that's why we're popping Q of 0, which is printing that the Q value, I mean the items in the queue will now reduce by 1. And finally, we release the empty to say that, yeah, there is one more thing that is empty. How this will look like, how to demonstrate this, especially this is where we need threads and random. So random, as we discussed in the dining philosopher's problem itself, is used to shuffle threads. That's it. So we are doing total, right? And then we're doing for i in max count. That is the number of 
items in the queue. We are just taking, there are some 10 producers, 10 consumers. Okay, that's it. You can actually change the number of producers and the number of consumers. There is a different version of this particular algorithm as well. I will make sure to put that also in the GitHub so that you can look at it and uh, kind of say which is better for you, whatever it is, you can do this. At the same time, you can kind of create one producer, one consumer and run it in a while loop as well. That is up to you completely because the algorithm will just keep happening. So, for my case, I am taking 10 producers, 10 consumers are there because this is 10 right here. Then we are just shuffling all of this and then what we are doing, we will finally run all of this stuff. So, once we are able to shuffle this, we just go to this particular list right here, which is what we have created. Then we start every single thread. Then we do time dot sleep of one, which means nothing. Time of sleep of one is saying some calculation is going on, some calculation, uh, instead of manually writing the calculation, we are assuming the CPU does some calculation for that particular amount of time, so we are sleeping. Once all of that is done, we are reiterating and joining all of these threads so that we can kind of put some output. That is how threading works. I hope you are able to understand what this code does. Let me just go ahead and run this to show you guys what that looks like as well. So, you can see initially producers has produced something, immediately there is a consumer who is able to consume it. Okay, And that is it. Uh, in this particular uh, implementation of the code, uh, since we are using the same number of producers and the same number of consumers, this values right here will kind of repeat, but uh, you can change the number of producers and the number of consumers or uh, how you are uh, coding this particular value right here. One second, let me just close this one. Uh, but yeah, this should serve as an idea as to how to do it. This is what producer does, this is what consumer does. This part of the code is up to you. Okay? So, instead of doing, uh, you know, the doing this producer 0, producer 1, producer 2 like that or consumer 0, consumer 1, consumer 2. You can do the 3 producers, 10 consumers, something like that. And if you are able to do that, you will see where a case where the producer, uh, the system waits till the producer actually produces something before a consumer is able to consume it. Okay. Right now, it is like the producer will produce and the consumer will consume immediately. But uh, this is, I mean, this should be an idea as to how to approach this problem. I hope you are able to understand how we are doing this. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Uh, all of this code is there in the GitHub. I will try to put another version as well, which you can uh, kind of, you know, uh, display a bit extra for whatever lab exams or something that you have. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in another video.